introduce the first, our head softball coach, Brent Bigness. Thank you, Bruce. As most of you probably know, athletes and coaches tend to be a little on the superstitious side. Most of us have our routines or little rituals that we will do over and over again. This can also spill over into the world of recruiting. We are always optimistic, yet usually cautiously optimistic, about the impact that a player can have on our program until at least we've seen him with our own two eyes. Just like you don't dare breathe a word about a no-hitter, until the last out, you also don't like to comment on the impact that a player can have on your program before they throw on their first pitch. Or as my dad would say, don't count your chicks before they're hatched. So you can imagine my sense of uneasiness when during an individual meeting, Tara tells me that she's trying to get her parents to allow her to go skiing over Christmas break. My heart nearly stops before she finished the sentence. My freshman pitcher with a rocket for her right arm <coughs> is now telling me that she wants to go skiing over break. I know at some point during the conversation, probably after I regained consciousness, I casually asked Tara if she was a good skier. And without batting an eye, Tara responds, nope, this will be my first time, coach. <laughs> As I become more and more uneasy, the deeper I get into this discussion, I can tell that my freshman phenom from Cortland, Nebraska, doesn't understand the significance of this topic. I knew instantly that I needed to bail on this conversation and go to higher authority, mom and dad. While my current players may not agree with this statement, I do my best not to micromanage things that go on in their personal lives away from school and softball. So I can honestly tell you that the phone call to Gene and Carol Oltman regarding what Tara does over Christmas break was the first and last phone call I've made of this type. I explained to her parents how vital she was to our program and that she can be a difference maker that we've been looking for. I even went as far as saying, I think she can be a 20 game winner for us. So now if you'll remember back to the whole superstitious thing, this is way worse than counting your chicks too soon. This is like talking about a no hitter in the first inning. Tara hadn't thrown a single pitch in a real game yet. And I'm telling her parents that she can help us win a championship and be a 20 game winner. Needless to say, her parents were very humble and even questioned, do you really think she can be that good? They understood my position and delayed her ski trip till after graduation. <clears throat> Once the phone call was completed, I only felt a brief sense of relief before the next irrational thought raced in my head. I began to wonder what kind of jinx I put on this poor kid, not to mention our team. You don't brag about a player like that before she's done anything. Well, obviously that jinx that I was worried about never materialized. I was wrong, by the way. She didn't win 20 games as a freshman, she won 26. That led the Missouri Valley Conference in wins, ranked 16th in the NCAA, and was an all-time freshman record at Creighton. What I will always remember about Tara is how competitive she is. She absolutely hated to lose. I knew that when I had a tear of the ball, not only would we be in every single game, but we would have a great chance to win regardless of the competition. There's no better example for this than when we traveled to Tucson, to play Arizona her sophomore year. Arizona was ranked seventh in the country and a two-time defending national champions. This team was loaded in every way. <clears throat> it had speed to burn, power up and down the lineup, great pitching in a circle, and was led by head coach Mike Kendrea, who was also the head coach for the 2008 Olympic softball team. So in many respects, this was as close to an all-star team as we may ever face. In our team meeting prior to heading to the stadium, I reminded the team to be the aggressors, to throw the first punch, to be aggressive early, to stay out of pitcher's counts. I talked to Tara about attacking the inside part of the plate and actually sawing their hands off. Although we were playing on their home field, because this was a tournament, we just happened to be listed as a home team, which usually is a good thing unless you're playing in Arizona and you have to go out on defense first. The game didn't quite start off as we had planned. Tara attacked their hitters inside just as we had discussed, but unfortunately she had to lead off all-American hitter. This had not set well with the nearly 2,000 or so Arizona fans who love their Wildcats. 
The next hitter reached base on an error. And before you know it, there's runners at first and second, no outs, and facing the middle of their lineup. Tara stuck with the game plan and attacked the three-hole hitter and brushed her back off the plate. The Arizona faithful were absolutely beside themselves, screaming at Tara, yelling at the umpires, wanting her to be tossed from the game. The Arizona players were actually offended that someone dare attack them inside and not pitch around them. None of this phases Tara. She gets a strikeout, a lineout, and a flyout to end the inning. The second inning, she really, really settles in as she proceeds to strike out the side. That was a defining moment in the game. Tara sent a message to not only her teammates, but to Arizona that we were there to win. The first three innings were pretty much a pitcher's battle, as Arizona was throwing their ace as well. That is until Renee Sinkler hit a solo shot in the fourth to give us a 1-0 lead. <clears throat> Our confidence continued to build. Arizona followed up with a home run of their own, game now tied 1-1. One -one. We respond in the bottom of the fifth with a two-out walk. Michelle Grainer followed with a single to left, and Laura Cradiville hit an RBI single to center field to give us a go-ahead run. In the top of the sixth with a runner at second base and two outs, our leadoff hitter hits a bloop to shallow right field that will certainly tie the game unless you have Liz McEwen playing second base. She made an over-the-shoulder catch on a dead sprint with her back to the infield for the third out of the inning. Still the single best softball play that I've ever witnessed. Heading into the seventh inning, we need three outs to pull off one of the biggest upsets in college softball. Tara strikes off the leadoff hitter, gets a ground out to second base, and the final somewhat dramatic out was a ground ball that ricochets off of Tara and goes directly to McEwen, who throws the first for the final out. Final score, Creighton two, Arizona one. In case anyone thought what happened in Arizona in 2008 was a fluke, one year later, we beat Arizona on their home field again, 6-0, to zero, as Tara became the first pitcher to shut out the Wildcats at home since UCLA did so in 2005. In that shutout, she scattered five singles to the 13th-ranked Wildcats, who went on to lead the NCAA in scoring, home runs, and slugging percentage. Tara's list of accomplishments can be staggering at times. She's the only female athlete in school history to be named first team all-conference all four years and is the only three-time Missouri Valley Conference Pitcher of the Year in league history. Tara helped her team win three regular season conference championships, two conference tournament championships, and led them to three NCAA regional appearances. She is a career leader in starts, complete games, innings pitched, appearances, and strikeouts. Tara's intensity and ability to shut down most every opponent she faced elevated the confidence of her teammates and made them better. She lifted our program to new heights, helped reestablish Creighton softball as a force in collegiate softball. Her impact on our program will always be remembered. I want to thank Jean and Carol for delaying that ski trip, and Tara, thank you for being so good to overcome any silly jinx that I may have placed on you. It is my honor to introduce to you one of the most dominant pitchers in Creighton softball history, 2017 Hall of Fame inductee, Tara Oltman Higgins. trip was delayed for 11 years. My husband just took me for my birthday this December, so thank you. I have all my limbs attached. First of all, I want to say thank you. I am very honored, and I would want to congratulate the other Hall of Fame inductees and award winners. At the conclusion of my career, I had 118 wins beside my name. The funny thing is that in all of that time, I didn't score a single run, I didn't notch a single hit, or steal a single base. My two collegiate at-bats amounted to one extremely ugly sacrifice bunt and one strikeout. Of course, the last time I checked, you had to score at least one run, one run to win a softball game. And in my four years, we scored 971 runs. I didn't score any. Clearly the success I experienced on the field did not come from my hard work or talent alone. Every honor I was awarded came in part 
because of the efforts of my teammates. My teammates who persevered following broken arms, thumbs, and legs, torn labrums, and rotator cuffs. My teammates worked hard day in and day out, and I am incredibly grateful to have played along, alongside such a hardworking, dedicated, and fun group of girls, especially my classmates, Jess, Michelle, Sarah, Michelle, and Renee. Of course, the coaching staff also played a major role in the team's and my success. Thank you, Coach Bigness, for taking a chance on a small town farm girl. Thank you, Abby, for putting up with me day after day during pitching workouts. And thank you to the other coaches at Creighton, as well as all of the softball coaches I've had since I first started playing when I was eight years old. I also want to thank Chris Bigness for treating us softball girls like family. And thank you for being such an enthusiastic fan. Like the fans in Arizona, I think maybe there are some people you wanted to strangle sometimes. The team could not have accomplished all that it did without you and the members of the safety patrol cheering us on. Before I continue, I owe a huge thank you to my catchers at Creighton, TJ, Laura, and Lauren. Thank you for the countless hours you spent behind the plate. Now for my very first catchers, mom and dad. I cannot say thank you enough to both of my parents who suffered bruised toes and shins and black eyes, all while sitting on a bucket or playing catch with me. They sacrificed time and money and probably a little bit of sanity so I could follow this dream I had of being a pitcher. It wasn't always easy and I wasn't always agreeable, but both of my parents were always incredibly supportive. Mom, thank you for always being positive and encouraging. Dad, Thank you for not sugarcoating everything like mom did. You two are the perfect combination. Thank you. I also want to thank my brother and sister for spending countless hours in the blazing sun and freezing cold while watching games. Heather and Preston, you spent way more than your fair share of summers and weekends at the ballpark. You might have complained, but I wasn't listening. So thank you. Mike. Thank you for reading this speech for me, for taking me skiing, and for coming to so many softball games. It really isn't fair that since football games only happen once a week, I probably only attended 30 or so football games in your five years at UNL. But you probably came, you probably sat through 20 or more softball games each year. Thanks, honey. Just one more thank you to my grandparents for loyally attending so many games, even though you were already gone by the time I'd get up from the locker room. Now, I am sure that I've left people out, and for that I apologize. You know, I owe a huge thanks to field crew, trainers, Steve Brace and the academic staff. Um, but I want to take a few moments now to share what I've learned about myself from my time playing softball. One time in an interview, I was asked whether my ERA or GPA mattered more to me. Without hesitation, I responded that my ERA was more important. Don't get me wrong, I'm a teacher. I value education, but at that point in my life, my success on the softball field was how I determined my value both on and off the field. My identity, who I was, hinged on being a softball player, which means while I hope I was never a terrible teammate, I know that I kept my distance from and my guard up around incoming pitchers. I liked being on top and I wanted to remain there. Then once I graduated, I didn't necessarily know who I was apart from softball. No stories appeared in the paper about me. Nobody gave me an award for being the top substitute teacher. There weren't any stats like ERA or GPA that I could look to in order to find out how much I was worth. On top of that, shortly after my athletic career ended, my husband's escalated. He went from college football player to NFL football player, and I struggled to figure out how I could be worth anything compared to his success. That being said, it's been seven years since I put on a Creighton jersey, and I'd love to go back to those days. I miss them. Fortunately, in these past seven years, I have learned that my value is not determined by any success I could have in sports, as a teacher, as a mom, as a wife, or in any role I might fulfill. My value comes from my creator alone. God has created you and me in his own image. Like you, I am a child of God, and as such, God says that you and I have value. It doesn't matter what the scoreboard says at the end of the day. You and I have dignity and worth because God has made us in his likeness. We have nothing to prove. Our stats don't determine our worth 
because God has already deemed us to be worth the life of his own son. So whether you are a freshman just starting out or a senior who has played his last game, don't worry, because you have immeasurable value in God's eyes. Finally, when I first began dreaming of playing college softball, I wanted nothing more than to be a Husker. Thankfully, that door never even peeked open. I would have taken any chance they'd given me, and I would have missed out on all that Creighton has to offer. I can't imagine a place with more supportive faculty, especially professors like Dr. Dickel and Dr. Thoreau, who supported me both in the classroom and on the field. And although AstroTurf wasn't an ideal outfield surface, and Ringer tennis shoes didn't exactly make a great fashion statement, there are no frills another school could have offered that would have been worth the trade-off of the experience I had at Creighton. Again, thank you.